Now today I thought it would be fun, or hopefully educational, to cover some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. Uh, instances where I've either had a very near accident or I actually did have an accident and um, I just want to tell you about them, tell you what happened, and then maybe that little story will stick in your head when you are using that tool and maybe it'll prevent an accident from happening in your shop. Now my first tale is a tale of a young woodworker in Temecula, California cutting a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood on his table saw. I did a few things wrong. I had the blade up really high, okay, instead of Essentially, I like to tell people about a tooth height above your workpiece is what you're aiming for. I had mine about an inch and a half up. I started making my cut, just probably wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. Now, this piece is pretty, uh, pretty true. Well, it's got a little bit of a bow in it. But the piece I had had a lot of bow in it. And I was just pushing it through, which just was an uneven cut. And as I was trying to flatten the board with my hand to push it through, at some point when I readjusted, the bow came back in the middle of the cut and I'm sure that's what caused it. It got caught in the blade and then flew back across the room. Fortunately, it didn't hit me, but it still obviously uh, scared me quite a bit. So what you can do to prevent something like that, obviously these thin pieces, you need to be careful with them because you'll find that's probably one of the most common materials that are gonna kick back. A lot of people underestimate uh, because they're so light and small, you don't really think it's a big danger like the big pieces, but in a lot of cases, the big pieces are more stable. Okay, so I lower the blade to the point that it's about a tooth height above the workpiece. Tighten her down. Okay, now you certainly could cut this uh, as is, but there are ways that you can, again, help yourself. A feather board would have been a nice touch. Lock that guy in place. Now, I don't have the proper fence set up here for my board buddies. They need a track to attach to your fence system. But if you do have that in place, the board buddy can go down and put that downward pressure. Now, that's what I was doing and simulating with my hands when I had the accident. This doesn't give up. It's always pushing down, even when I reset my hand position. So it's a very good thing to have in place. And as you push that through with a splitter in place, should be a perfectly safe cut. And I could have prevented that from happening. Now, this one is sort of woodworking related. It's something that a lot of us may attempt, um, but it's really not a good idea. See the six inch sewer and drain pipe here that I use for my dust collection system? Well, I had the bright idea uh, at one point. It wasn't a six inch, this was with four inch, again, back in my old shop. And I was using my bandsaw to cut it. Well, when you cut something like that that's round, you have the potential for it to roll one way or the other. And I, usually you don't think of the bandsaw as being able to kick something back, but when you cut something that's a, a circle, and you don't have complete control over it, you sure can have some serious kickback from that. And I did. So uh, the moral to that story is don't cut, you know, big PVC pipe on your bandsaw. There are much safer ways to do it. And in fact, what I just did after that was I used a jigsaw and a reciprocating saw to have a much more controlled cut. It wasn't that pretty, but it certainly was better than creating plastic PVC shrapnel uh, and running for cover. So. Now this is probably one of the, the scarier um, incidents that I had. It was almost like a scene from a movie because it was something that was very slow and my impending doom was, was approaching and I had to react and didn't really know what to do. As you feed material through a drum sander and the same rule applies to the planer, you have uh, these, these points where you can have your fingers pinched. Now the problem is in a case like this, this conveyor belt on a drum sander is coarse enough that it can pull your finger in. All right, so as I was pushing through, I wasn't paying attention. I actually got my finger caught under a board and between the board and the conveyor. So here's where the movie scene started. It was pulling my finger in further and further. The problem was I was, I was freaking out. I, I my, certainly did not have my wits about me. Obviously, the first thing to do would be to shut off the conveyor uh, and, and get your finger out of there. But I was sort of overreacting. Fortunately, as my finger got closer and closer, it put so much strain on the drum that the circuit blew and it stopped on its own. I don't know that I would have reacted in time and I don't even want to think about the, you know, what kind of result I would have had from that. So at least once I finally did get my finger out, all I had to deal with was a blood blister and a very bruised finger. Um, but it taught me a very, very painful lesson on what can happen if you don't avoid those pinch points. So anytime I put anything into the planer 
uh, or into the drum sander. I'll keep my fingers under if I'm feeding from the back of the board, but if I'm anywhere near within a foot of the board, I'm always feeding from the top. My fingers will never go underneath this board just because I don't even want to take a chance. So I always feed my boards in like this, grabbing a board from the top and putting pressure, of course, putting your fingers that close is never a good idea, but I put downward pressure like this as I feed it through, okay, never under. And I don't know if you've ever seen a powerful planer when it grabs a board, but man, when, it, when those rollers engage that board, it usually lifts it up and snaps it back down. And if your fingers are under there, under this metal roller, you're probably gonna get a broken finger. Now here's a fun story. I had my, my very first joiner. It was a very old, very heavy craftsman uh, tabletop sort of model. And I was cutting a board down. I think it was a, just a board of red oak, four quarter. And uh, I needed to take just a hair off the end. Now, I didn't have a good miter saw. Uh, I think I had a table saw, but for some reason, I, I didn't think I'd be able to take off um, the right amount with that. So I figured, you know what? Hey, the jointer takes off a 32nd of an inch per pass, right? Why not run it over the joiner? So I did this. Um, I would hope that right away everybody is going, are you kidding me? Because you should have that reaction. I just didn't know. I didn't see any reason not to do it. Well, let me tell you why not. You've got vertical grain here. When that blade hits your end grain and goes into that vertical grain, it's going to split this board apart in an instant. And I went through. The first inch was OK. And I think I had a point where it, it started to tip a little bit and I made an adjustment. And when I went right back down, the next blade that contacted the end grain smacked into that wood. And that was probably the most painful, although I never really had a major injury, that was probably the most painful one because it shot uh, a piece of wood into uh, the back part of my hand and just gave me this massive blood blister uh, on the inside of my palm. Uh, but wow, talk about being scared. I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if you remember that, hon, but that was, that was a scary day. <laughs> so um, again, of course, don't run end grain over the jointer, not a good idea. And certainly running anything vertically like this is crazy. That's just crazy talk. So don't do that either. Now, another little mishap that I had took place at the drill press. And this, you know, I really should have known better. It's kind of common sense. Anytime you drill metal, there's a real good chance at some point that the bit is gonna catch into the metal and wanna make it spin. Now, if you allow it to spin, you've got a problem on your hands. Usually you clamp it in place and you'll slowly but surely power your way through those parts. And I just wasn't thinking. I was building the legs for my outfeed table uh, on my table saw and I needed some angle iron drilled uh, for probably quarter inch bolts to go through. So being in a rush, I just put my fence in place. I had a little piece of angle iron, put it up against the fence. <laughs> and, uh, and started drilling. I got a, a little bit through and then what do you think happened? It actually did catch and wound up, get my arm caught in the thing there, um, it wound up pulling this up and spinning it back into my wrist. And uh, that wasn't a major injury, but it was, just, it, I mean, it's a big piece of metal just whack smacking you in the wrist. So another blood blister, black and blue, running into the house, crying like a little kid, um, but, you know, it was just not a good situation. So of course, anything at the drill press, it doesn't have to be metal, wood, whatever it is, you never really want to just, I mean, there are certain cases where you can get away with holding it with just one hand if you're just drilling small holes and things, but it's always safer to clamp your work pieces on both ends. And that's where these really big wide mouth clamps really come in handy is to uh, clamp things like this onto your drill press. And if it's completely secure, especially if you're using something like a Forstner bit, the, uh, the cut quality is gonna be a lot better and it's gonna be a heck of a lot safer. Now the next thing that I did that resulted in a, a scary moment was, um, well this is probably up there uh, on, on stupidity level with, uh, with the jointer mistake. Obviously when you're working with a router, whether it's handheld or on a table, you need to understand the direction that the router is supposed to go. And I apparently didn't get that you know, when you turn a router upside down, it's exactly the opposite of what it is when the router is handheld. So I had my first router table going and I knew I needed to put a little bit of a, a profile and I'm not even sure why I did it this way. I can't remember the exact circumstance, but I figured it would be really smart to run the workpiece between the fence and the router bit like this. 
Now this direction is okay if we're on this side of the bit, right? The front of the bit. But if you run it in that direction on the back of the bit, you are now pushing in the same direction as uh, the bit itself is rotating, which means it's going to help accelerate it through the cut. So it was perfect. It was, uh, the, all I can say is thank God no one was standing over there. I wasn't in harm's way, but it was hilarious and very dangerous at the same time. So I pushed it through. I got about a quarter inch in, and then this piece of wood just took off like a missile and just went whoop right across the room into the drywall and everything. And then I afterwards was like, hmm, guess I'm not doing that again. So again, fortunately did not have an injury on that one, but was a close enough call to make me realize again, the physics of what's going on. And if you understand the physics of it and what the potential accidents are, that would have been so easily preventable, but what am I gonna do? I'm Mark. Now, all of these injuries that I've told you about or uh, near injuries that I've told you about, all took place in my first year of woodworking. It was at a point where I was so aggressive with my learning curve that I was in the shop well before um, I had read up on it or even read instruction manuals. I was really, I was just so aggressive that I became a little bit dumb about the whole thing. And I put myself in uh, you know, positions where I may have been injured. And in some cases I was, but fortunately I still have all my fingers, no major, you know, no trips to the hospital. And I think I was pretty lucky in that sense. But since then, after that first year, I took it as a personal mission of mine to make sure I do things the right way because this is dangerous stuff. The bottom line is every time we walk into this shop, we have to realize the dangers and what can actually happen if these, you know, something just goes wrong. Okay, so the good thing is since then, I've probably been, you know, four, maybe five years without a single, other than maybe a splinter, no real injuries. Um, and I don't really think it's luck. I think it's a matter of bringing a certain amount of attention uh, and just a little degree of common sense to the shop every time you come in there. So make fun of me if you want to. It's very easy to do with some of these things. Um, you know, maybe one day we'll do a show on making router missiles. That might be fun. Uh, that, that's a joke. Um, but hopefully this will give you some, um, you know, some pointers and learning from my mistakes uh, so you don't make them yourself.